Hey, I'm Bob with Laguna Tools. I can't tell you how excited I am to be able to show you this newest model of the IQ Pro. Let's start with the frame on the IQ Pro. We designed these just like we did the Smart Shops. They have all welded one piece steel frames. All the machining is done in a single setup so everything aligns. We use world class components for motion control. It really makes a great package. These machines feature a liquid cool spindle. Now this happens to be a three horsepower. It's an ER20 so it holds a half inch tool. Uh, these may very well be the most reliable spindles in the world. The reason being the liquid cooling. Basically, water circulated around the bearings and it keeps them at a constant temperature. And that lets you machine a long time. We run programs sometimes that take eight hours and the bearings never heat up. That's the secret to why these spindles last so long. You know, one of the things we did when we designed this machine was to put all the electrical components in their own cabinet away from the machine process so you don't get the vibration. And it works out as a really nice compact system. What excites me the most about this new model is the control system. Okay, We basically designed a new control system for the machine based on wind CNC technology and it offers a whole lot of capabilities. For instance, it runs on a PC. So now that gives me the ability to be tied into the network, to transfer files, but what I really like about it is having the ability to run a programming software on the control. We've done really, really well with the handheld control on the basic IQ model. But we decided that when we went to a pro model, we really wanted to have more capability. And we decided it sure would be nice to run VCAR Pro or Aspire or Rhino right here at the machine. You know, what if you're prototyping or making something in your garage? It sure is handy to have that all integrated. And that was, that was one of the reasons that we selected that technology. The other was this opens up the door to a lot of different things for the machine. For instance, if you want to do reverse engineering, there's a probe system. It's an option. It'll basically probe apart and digitize it, all right? If you want to put a tool changer, we created a tool changer version of this. So it has, a, it, it, once again, it's a liquid cooled. It's a, a real high precision tool changer. It has a rack in the back. And that comes in real nice when you're doing pro processing with a lot of different tools. And so this control gave us the ability to do that. It also can control four axes. So that means if you decide that you want to do turnings on there, there's an option for that. So going to the Win CNC based controller opens all that up for us. We designed the tables on the IQ series machines to give you a lot of flexibilities for lots of different setups. People do all kinds of things with these machines. We started with some MDF pads, which are sacrificial, so you can machine into them if you want to. We put T-slots on here to allow you to clamp. On this particular setup, here's how I started it. First off, I fly cut the top of these pads. That makes it perfectly flat and it lines up with the, the cutter. Second, I took a piece of white melamine board using double stick tape, stuck it down. So that becomes our flat surface. Now our blank is actually taped to that. So that's how we set this up. Well, I was looking for a neat project to make on the IQ Pro. Um, and some of our customers call in sometimes or email in, and, and they have certain requests. And we get a lot of requests for these picture frames. They're actually made out of MDF, but they have a lot of machining on them. And I thought that'd be a really good project to do. And I kind of wanted to walk you through how you, how you approach start with a project like that. And then once I get it finished, then we'll go over to the machine and we'll actually cut it and see if it all works out. Okay, let's look at the, the shapes we have here. Now, what I basically did was I started out with um, just, a, just a curved shape on the outside and I want to put a profile around that, all the way around it. And what I really want to do is I don't want to have to buy a profile cutter, so I want to show you how you make that profile with just simple tools, number one. Uh, once we get this done, there's actually three setups. One will be, of course, where we locate the blank on the machine's table, and I'll be using double stick tape, more than likely. And the way I've got the machine set up is I fly cut those top MDF pads so they're perfectly flat, and then I've taped on a piece of three quarter inch material and then the blanks for the frame get taped on there. <clears throat> so the first program, I'm actually just gonna cut a shallow uh, groove around there to show me where to place the blank. Here's how I started this thing. I had a picture, a photograph of a mirror similar to this that I wanted to use. And so I had to determine some geometry and you'll see a bunch of lines there, but it's basically, you can see the shape here. The other thing that you have to worry about is what the actual molded profile is gonna look like. And here's how that's done. Let's zoom into this. 
I got the idea that I could I could probably just make a cove here. I believe that's a quarter inch radius. This is an eighth inch drop, and that's a three h radius. Then I added this line so that these would be level, and that becomes one. It's all joined together. The distance between here and here is five eighths of an inch. So that's where you start. That's that's what determines that molding. And then when we tool path it, we'll use a ball tool, so it'll just go around there, and it'll, whatever shape we create here is what we get on the edge. And that's the main thing I want to show you on this. Okay, now let's zoom back out. Okay, so in order to make that happen, I'm going to come up here where it says create two rail sweep. All right, now here's the tricky part. You got to pick your rail. So pick this one, hold the shift key down to add to the selection, and then say use selection. Now look at this point, look at the arrows. Both lines are going in the same direction, and both start points are, are close to each other. All right, now the next thing I need to select is this profile itself. I pick that and I hit apply. And if I did everything right, you should see that molded edge. And let's look in 3D, and there it is. So that's all it takes to create that the molded edge. And remember, the cross section determines what that edge is. So whatever you draw is what you're going to get. Okay, let me give you a little hint that I learned here. If if the shape comes out on the wrong side of the line, you click the two lines in the wrong order. That's what determines which side. So. Uh, you should be right half the time. All right, so that gives us basically our molding around the edge. Now we need to fill that in. So we're gonna use another modeling technique for that. One of the things that's a little tricky sometimes with this modeling or creating components is when you have more than one component. In our case, this first component is just the outside edge. And what gets confusing sometimes is alignment. So let's do another little step here. Now our, our, our component shows right here, but let's add another little step. Sometimes you're better off if you start in the model or the component with a flat plane. So let's do that. So what we're going to do is go back to our geometry. This time we're going to go up here to this. This button says create shape. I've got this selected. I'm going to click that. Okay, the base height's going to be zero. It's going to be a flat plate. And I'm going to name it. I'm going to call it plate. P-L-A-T-E. And I'll hit apply. And let's look at that in 3D. And you see there's my plate. So there's a plate here and in that molding. If I turn... So I can turn those on and off. Now, what's funny, um, you notice when you look at component, you see these little symbols right here. Now first off, I'm going to put the plate as the very first thing. So I just moved it up on the list, all right? And now, right now, the component is setting up on the plate. It doesn't make any difference because the plate's zero thickness, but if it had thickness, it would. So let's talk about what this does a little bit. When you get into create a component, let's, let's just do one. What I need next is something to fill the inside of that. So if I pick that geometry, and I come over here, and I, I just want to build something three quarters thick, then you, this, you see these units down here. Okay, this means add. This is add add to the surface. This is subtract from it. This is add but keep the back constant. So what I typically would do is I would click this one and then that makes the backs of all those components lay on the top of that plane. If you have trouble building these components up where things are stacking on top of each other, that's what your problem is. So sometimes it's easier to start with a flat plate with no thickness and then then build off that. Uh, also, think about this. If you're ever building something in 3D and it's got 2D machining in it, you're going to have to have a way to line it up. So this is a real good way to make, it, make that line up with your 2D drawing, too. Because you get out there in space, you can't tell where it's at. Okay, so let's see what happened here. All right, we'll look at that in 3D. And there it is. So that became our component. How about that? Okay, so now that, that component filled in, so that's what we're looking for. Sometimes when you create components out of multiple components, it gets kind of complicated. So there's a function built into Spire called Bake, and, and I can take two components and it combines them, it becomes one. Now all I do is select them and I hit this icon at the top up here that looks like uh, it's got smoke coming off of it. And that combines those now into a single component. So on my component tree, there's just one object now. That just makes it a lot simpler, and especially if you're going to do other things. 
Okay, now this is really all the 3D modeling part you have to do. Now I've got to make a cutout, but that cutout's really just cutting a line, so I really don't have to put that in a model if I don't want to. What I have to do is this in order to get that edge. So now let's look back over at, at the actual drawing, and you'll see this line right here is what we, this line right in here is what we use. We're just going to cut uh, a little bit past halfway through the material, and since before we did this, we cut on the back side, that opens up that's your opening for your picture. This is what it looks like if you actually take that material out. Like I say, it's not really necessary just for the tool pathing, but that's what it's going to look like. Okay, now let's go to the next step and let's actually apply tool pass. Okay, now I'll show you how I put tool pass on here. There's a couple things you, you have to have that are really on the drawing, so I'm going to open the, the drawing itself up. We'll open up tool pass. We'll hit the little thumbtack. The first thing I did was machine the contour, and that's what it looks like. Let's see if we can see it in 3D. There it is. So there's your tool pass that went around that contour. Let's open that up so you can kind of get an idea of, of what that was. All right, I'm going to go back to this drawing because I'm going to explain to you what those lines are used for. So let's open this up. Okay, I used an eighth inch tapered bit, the tapered ball nose. This one is a Vortex 2215, I believe. So it's a round ball on the end, it's an eighth of an inch. It tapers up to a quarter inch with a cutting edge of about an inch and a half, so the angle's about three degrees, and it does really, really well cutting this 3D stuff. All right, now, so that was the first thing I did. But you'll notice now, these lines that you see here, these are regions, so I, what I'm saying, when I select those lines, what I'm saying is apply the tool pass to the model between those lines. That's how, that's how I keep from tool pathing the entire thing. So, so that's what those are. Now the reason I made this outside one is because I wanted some extra room so that the tool could actually go out past the outside. Otherwise it would just abruptly stop. So that's why I added that. So that was a contour and if we look at what happens when we simulate Zoom that in, and we'll turn that off now. So we simulate that, and there's what's going to happen. The tool is going to just go around and step over, and once it's finished, those profiles are, are completed. So you can tell already, I could actually create any profile I wanted virtually without having a special tool made. Right? Then the next one is the outside. That cuts that out, and that's a straight bit. Okay, now this final tool path on this setup is to cut the inside of where you see the picture through and we're using a quarter inch tool we're going on the inside of the geometry and it's going to go a little past halfway and it's going to intersect with the cut that we make first and so that's what gives you your opening for the drawing so let's look at that so what we'll see here so those three tool paths basically create this surface okay before we go out to run the actual picture frame on the machine Let's look at one other thing. The first thing we're going to do on the blank is on the back side, we're going to cut a little pocket, and it's going to have the dog bone corners in it. Let's see what that looks like. So we click that. All right, so what happens is that becomes the rabbit that the picture sets on from the back. And I put the dog bones in there so you'll have square corners on your picture. So that gets cut in the blank first. We're also, by the way, going to cut the outside and you probably won't be able to see it so much on the simulation. But see, I want to make sure that I know exactly what size the blank is, because I'm going to turn it over and align it with some marks on the table, and that way uh, the front and back machining line up. Now that we've got all of our tool paths completed, now let's go to the machine and let's make this picture frame. Now, I've got a couple options here. I'm going to actually copy the files to a USB key. Since the IQ Pro has a Windows computer that runs the system, I can also connect that to a network and could send the files directly to there. Or I could be running the Spire on the controller if I wanted to. If I were sitting in my shop, I could easily be doing what you've seen on the screen here right there in the shop on my control. Okay, now let's validate what we did with Aspire. If you recall, we designed a little picture frame. We created three programs. One of them I've already run called Setup. And what it basically did was cut into this top uh, a rectangle that's a correct size of the blank. And that way, that's how we knew where to locate it on the machine. That's what ties back to Aspire. 
The second program is going to machine the back size. It's just really going to do two things. It's going to cut that pocket, and that pocket then becomes in the end where the picture goes, a ledge for the picture. And then we're actually going to define the, the perimeter of this so that now we, have, we can line that up with our table, and when we flip it over, the front and back line up. These machines come with a really nice dust collection shroud, but we're going to leave that off while we're cutting this so that you can actually see the tool. When you're machining, always wear eye protection. Make sure you wear ear protection if it's, if it's going to be loud. I like this feature. I can jog the machine with the keyboard with just the arrow keys and page up and page down, control and Z. That's so handy. Oh wow, this came out great. There's our little dog bones, that came out good. The outside cut good. Uh, now our next step then is to turn this upside down and we'll do the machining on the other side and we should have a picture frame when we're done. Okay, now we've turned our piece upside down and it's secured with tape. We've changed tools. Now we're gonna use this tapered bit that's an eighth inch ball nose on the end and we need to touch it off. And of course the machine has tool touch off so we'll use that feature. Absolutely amazing. The shape is exactly what we drew. You know, smooth. Now we've got one more step, and that is our one more tool. And we cut the perimeter, and then we cut through, and that gives us our picture opening. So let's change tools. This came out unbelievable. Holy cow. Oh, there's my dog bones. Ha, huh, neat, everything lined up. So when I flipped it, I did a pretty good job of getting it aligned. Wow, that's amazing. You know what's incredible is whatever profile you draw is what you get on the part. So there's really a, no limit to what you can do with the machine using that technique. Well, I hope you enjoyed the video. We really enjoyed producing it. Uh, for one thing, the machine is great, and I, I'm really excited about our new, uh, our new model here. I love how we've done the control. I like now that we have so many different options. And I also wanted to, to show you some techniques to, to do things you may not have thought of. And this made a really, really nice little product. If you have any questions, you can call us at 1-800-234-1976 or you can go to our website, lagunatools.com. Thank you for watching.